I really like printing with translucent resin, but it's really hard to photograph fine details because so much light passes through, so I had the idea to inject dark paint into the model to give it an opaque background so we can get better quality pictures. So in this video, I'm going to show you my process so you can try it too. In this video, we're going to be using Elegoo's standard photopolymer resin in translucent green. This resin is technically translucent, but you can see when it gets thick, it becomes fairly opaque, so it's not really easy to see through. We're going to be using an Elegoo Mars 2 Pro for a 3D printer, and for a model, I'm using the Doom Slayer by Printed Obsession. This is an awesome model, and it's really easy to hollow out and doesn't require a whole lot of support considerations. You can see here from this little time lapse, as the model is printing, the thin areas are translucent, but the thicker areas are opaque, even though the model is hollow. Actually, let's try a smoother time lapse. Yeah, that's definitely more like it. I love making time lapse videos, but it's kind of complicated on a resin 3D printer, which is why Uncle Jesse and I created Resin Lapse. This is so we can create these silky smooth looking time lapse videos using a resin 3D printer and a Canon DSLR camera. This just looks so cool to me. It looks like the model's being printed out, and you can see this is a time lapse done over a period of hours, but we're watching it in only a few seconds as the model is being printed. You can actually see trapped air bubbles on the left slowly work their way up into the arms. It's a really cool effect of this type of time lapse, and it's pretty wild seeing so much work condensed into such a short period of time. Okay, back to our model. Because we're effectively going to be painting the inside of this model, we want to be careful when we go through the wash process that we wash not only the outside, but the inside of our model too. So here you can see the alcohol dripping out as I pour it, and you can see the air bubbles trapped inside. Once I've confirmed that there's IPA on the inside of the model, and there's a good bit of it, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good shake just to rinse out some of those inner cavities that I can't really access any other way. I want to make sure that it's cleaned out pretty thoroughly on the inside, so I want to go through a few cycles of dipping the model in the isopropyl alcohol and then allowing it to drain out and rinse. This will give me my best shot at having a clean inside as well as outside. From here, the next step is to put it in the UV curing station. So I'm using the Elegoo Mercury X here, and one of the nice features about this particular curing station, in addition to the two rows of UV lights, it also has a horizontal upward facing row of LED lights, which I can use to cure the hollow cavity. So as the model passes over it, it will fully cure the outside as well as the inside. Once the model's been fully cured and there's no alcohol left, it's time to fill the model with paint. This is pretty easy, and you can see here we have four holes on the bottom of the feet, and this is going to let us inject the paint while also allowing the air to escape from the model. To inject the paint, I'm using a standard dental syringe. I don't think it really matters what kind you use, I just needed something that would provide enough suction to pull the paint out of the jar and then push it into the model. Speaking of paint, I'm using Apple Barrel Acrylic. This is really cheap, it's only a couple of bucks usually at a craft store, and it's pretty thick, and it's also very dark, so it's perfect for filling the inside of the model. I added a backlight to the shot, so you can see, because the model's hollow, light passes through it pretty easily. It's translucent, but not transparent. Drawing the paint is pretty easy. I typically put the paint jar at a little bit of an angle just to try and get as much paint out of it as I can. You can see I got a bit of an air bubble here just because I ran out of paint at the top of the jar. Injecting it is super straightforward. You just want to pay attention to the speed you inject it at. As you're injecting paint into the model, air will be escaping from the other holes. So you have to be careful you don't just slam all the paint in at once. You want to sort of gently inject it and make sure it doesn't come spilling out. You can see here I was a little bit fast and so some of the paint bubbled back up through that second drain hole. Definitely not the end of the world, but just something to keep an eye out for. Once we've injected some of this paint, we can stop and take a look and see the difference that it makes. With this opaque paint acting as a backing, it really makes the detail pop on the translucent portion of the model. So from here, we're going to go ahead and finish up and continue injecting paint. So we'll go nice and slow, making sure that we don't spill any over, and we can watch the paint as it fills the model. So there is a little bit of a problem here, and if you're familiar with injection molding, you may have already spotted it. As I'm filling this model with paint, you're going to notice it's traveling down the leg, through the hips, and into the torso. So, so far so good, everywhere where we want paint, we're adding paint. And it looks pretty sharp. But, the problem we're going to run into in just a minute here is how can we get this paint to travel up into the arms. We can see we don't really have a problem getting the paint to travel down from the legs into the torso, but we do need to try to fill up the air pockets in the arms. So what I'm going to do is shake the model and see if I can get that paint to spread around a little bit. 
This usually works pretty well, but you can see we do have some trapped air bubbles in the forearms of the model. Unfortunately, the easiest way to evacuate that trapped air is going to be drilling a small hole for the air to escape from as we put more paint in. So using the smallest drill bit I could find, I drilled a small hole in the back of the forearm right under a feature detail where I figured it would be least likely to be seen. And from here, I can put more paint into the model, shake it around, and allow that trapped air to escape. Once the model's been completely filled with paint and we don't have any trapped air left, we're gonna apply a couple drops of super glue to those two vent holes on the bottom of the foot, and using an activator spray, we're gonna get that glue to cure immediately. And we're gonna do the same thing for that small hole on the arm, just a quick drop of glue followed by a spritz of activator. This glue plug will give us a nice tight seal and prevent any paint from escaping, and also it can be sanded down or processed or painted, so the model will sit flat. And that's it. From here, we can take a look and see the level of detail that we're able to make out on the model. And you can see here from the panels on the back of the Doom Marine, it is surprisingly crisp. You can see a lot of details on the back of the armor here that you wouldn't really be able to make out on the fully translucent model. It just looks sort of fuzzy. It's really hard to photograph. You can look at some of the smaller details on the small of the back here, and you can actually see the individual layer lines from the resin. It's pretty impressive to see them this close up without using a macro lens. Because the model has an opaque core, adding a backlight really makes that translucent skin pop out, and it gives it kind of a cool glow effect. And that's it. Now you've got an awesome looking model printed with a translucent resin that still has an opaque core. I had a lot of takeaways from this project, but I think the most important one is that you need to put a lot of consideration into your drain hole placement when you're making your model. You want to pay attention to where the paint will be entering and where the air will be escaping. I'm sure there's tons of additional applications for using a technique like this. I think medical models, for instance, would look awesome with some kind of fill. If you've got an idea, be sure to leave it in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.